Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194 and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to stop in and visit and check out my video. And I'm going to, uh, this is going to be a video about the Nissan GTR here at Spa, the one of a few videos that will be coming out. And it's going to be probably a few minutes longer than uh, normal, um, just because I want to go over some things with the GTR that are specific to it. Um, especially with the way the car is and the way, especially with the gears and things and some driving tips for the car. And you can try them yourself to see if it works for you. Um, so let's go ahead and jump behind the car. And this is a low fuel run, so I was checking that too. Um, I'll let you know what it was running in with a race fuel load. I do that in second gear. Don't I don't use first, I use second, just so it just has no problem hooking up and you can get on the gas early. You might want to try first, but um, here you got the orange. That's what I go off of the fence here in the car basically coming up to it judgment But I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this orange thing here Again the Nissan GTR is more of a turn in early car not a late apex type car So you got to turn in a little bit early. That's just the way the, the front is uh, Unfortunately, if you try to get it to knife edge the back end just wants to be so oversteery It's just terrible and of course with the wing you know, the wing only has four adjustments. So if you do one click on a wing, it's a big adjustment. So again, you got to watch that also. We go over more of that stuff in the setup. Again, try to hold it close there. Let it run out wide. Again, I do that in second gear. I don't use first here anywhere on this track at all. Now here, I stay in fifth gear. As you can see, I'm right up in the red line, near the red line, but it's just for a second or so and that way it pulls it all the way up the hill but when i get as soon as i know i've made it through rouge i get it up into into top gear into sixth um because again the mid-range is this car is really really good so again you want to use the mid-range uh with this turbo v6 it's got plenty of it as soon as you see as you make it you know you make it you click it up into sixth and that way it'll pull it all the way up the all the way up they ran right, right around 166 to 167 which is right there again i use the 100 mark sometimes you can go in a little bit deeper um i probably could have gone in deeper on this to be honest with the low fuel load but th that's actually the same as a race uh with a race fuel load so Again, I do it in third gear. I don't do it in second. Third gear is good. Just go down to third. Again, this, the mid range is great. You got plenty of RPM and you don't need to overtax the tires. Kick that up into fourth. You can hold fourth all the way down, or if you get a great drive, you might have to click it into fifth. I uh, hear um, I did try third through here and it's okay, but it's too inconsistent. So you're probably better off to go down to second. Get a good drive through here. Look it up into third and just stay in third. You don't need to, you don't need to go down to second through here. Um, again, the car's got plenty of mid range and you'll lose time. I messed this corner up, but you come up here and basically this orange right here. Um, sometimes you can go in a little bit deeper, so that's what I should have done this time. Um, but I was probably on a little on the cautious side and it what it did is it made me run a little wide Just ran about a half a car length wide or so um, But that hurt Coming up here Basically right here where the curbing is again. I go down to third not second just stay in third and Then go up into fourth as I'm coming through this corner accelerate and I go up into fourth and then right through here, this curbing here is go down to third again. And again, I turned here or too early. So here it's really, really a tough corner because you want to hold it wide open. Um, but if you turn in too early, what it does, it makes you run wide and then, or you got to get off the gas and that just absolutely kills you going down that straightaway. So you're, again, I lost time, some time here. So this is far from a perfect lap, um, but you can just try to wait a little bit later to turn in here. Um, I mean, I mean, again, the car is not the greatest at a late apex, so don't wait too late. But um, if you turn in too early, 
you then it run it pushes you wide. I was still in bounds, but barely. But it you know made me lose a little bit of time. And again, on this fast left-hander, you know you keep in a matted. You got to turn in just a little bit early. Run it right next to the curb, so you don't get it out of bounds and it stays in. And then all the way down through here, basically about the 150. You know, I'm looking at the 100, but it's you know right in between. Um, but it's closer to the 100 when you're sitting in the car. Go down to second again. Run it right near that curb. And that curb. And again, that wasn't my fastest lap, but it was just a you know it was just a real good basic lap. Um, and it was a 217.51. You see, I ran, did run a 217.46, so I did run a little faster. And I can't tell you how many times with the low, uh, I had like a 217.3 in my Delta. So it's there. Um, and with a race fuel load, I was running high 217s to 218 O's. So basically, kind of like a similar with the 992 Porsche. Uh, if you remember my LFM race, I qualified at a 217.5. So basically, right on pace with that. And even in the race, I was running right near my uh, uh, qualifying time. So basically, I think the GTR would be the same way, especially in the draft. Uh, in the draft, this thing would be a monster. So, I mean, it would probably draft really, really good. Um, so that's just, again, some of the tips that I would try. Um, again, you always want to you know use the motor and the the uh linear of the the engine as it, you don't want to over over torque the tires and, and get, get into an oversteer type issue so again that's one thing with the nissan with its different gear ratios sometimes it's, it really helps and sometimes it can hurt um but let's go over to setup and let's talk about that we got 25 8 on the front and 25 3 left rear 25 5 right rear the toe's negative 0.15 with the camera at negative 4 and the caster at 18.5. The toe on the rear is a positive 0 0.05 with the camber at negative 3.4. Um, the tire wear is very, very good on this. Um, really, nothing more to try here. I've tried so many different things with alignments and this and that. So it's very, pretty, feels very, very balanced and very good tire wear. Uh, TC is three, one, and one. So again, I tried a lot of different things. You can go to four. Uh, it doesn't make that much of a difference. It might help. It might hurt you just a little bit. But if you feel the car is just a little oversteer, you know, just that little bit oversteer, I would just not mess with it and click it up to four, and that will help calm that down. Um, again, you know, just to your individual track conditions. Uh, of course, 55 liters. Um, I did both. You know, with a race fuel load, and it actually it got faster as you were going so it I, I really liked it because you know the first two or three laps were just okay but then it kept picking up a tenth or two every lap so it was pretty good through a stint uh anti roll bars four brake bias is 58 steering all the way down springs are 166,000 with a bump stop rate of 900 bump stop range of five and the sprint on the springs on the rear are 136,000 with a bump stop rate of 1200 and a bump stop range of 25 any roll bars eight and preload 100 now i tried a lot of different things here tons of different stuff um there's really not a lot more to try to be honest um i mean you could try if you want to knock some of the preload out of the diff but the only thing i don't like is as the car wears it start you start to get you know you start to get some spin on the going through the corners if you get on the gas early so i didn't care for that so that's why i did try it but I turned up the diff um, to knock that out because I, I just didn't want that. Um, you can try one more click on the anti roll bar. It gives the front end a little bit more solid feel, but it does hurt it a little bit in the slower sections and the slower chicanes and things. So again, it just depends on what you what you prefer. It does help it in the faster stuff, but it hurts it in the slower stuff. Um, other than that, everything's really good shocks we got on the left uh, left front we got eight zero twenty eight and twenty and on the right front we have eight zero twenty one and seventeen on the rear we have five zero eighteen and thirteen again i did try to do it individual because the front was getting a little bit um needed some more in you know adjustments on the individual side because they were too far out so i did that to try to help that 
arrow got 50 all the way down on the front 64 in the rear with a maxed out wing and a three and a three in the brake ducts and the front arrow variation is a negative 0.2 now like i said if you take one click out of wing which i did try i mean you see it goes all the way up to 0.9 on the positive so again it makes a huge difference because you only have four adjustments so when you make a click it's a big one um it's not like you have 10 or 15 or whatever so it's a real big adjustment so again um i'd be cautious about that uh especially well even in qualifying to be honest because you got so much power you can get you can lose time so easily by the car just getting into the oversteer issues um speed wise it was maybe a, a mile or two off you know the the better stuff but still i mean you i'm not really worried about that i'm trying to get the car to really get through the corners and break, use the brakes and be drivability and uh and of course over a stint i mean again like i said the first two laps you just can see every time you know the car you know running like a uh, like if I would first go out with a race fuel load, it would run like a, you know, a 218, a mid 218 or something like that. And then it would drop to a, a two, a, an 18, uh, three or two for a couple laps. And then it would drop down to a, an 18 0 or, or, you know, I'd be right there around two se high two seventeens or two eighteens after four or five laps. So that's what I like because it's getting faster and faster. And that's telling me that the car is really working into the track and it's and it's not going to just fall off a cliff so again i think it's going to be really good for a stint not to say it wouldn't slow up with some but i think it would be very minimal um again i just want i think it's a really good setup for spa a really good base setup and again you know for rain i would just probably go up maybe one click at a time on the rain in the front that's it um probably wouldn't do anything else maybe maybe take some of the negative camber out of this I would probably do that if it was a full rain event uh, you know I would probably knock two or three clicks out of the out of all these uh, for the rain but you know really and of course adjust your electronics accordingly but really this is a great base setup that you can use for qualifying rain and race just a few little adjustments and boom you go so again I hope you enjoy it again like all my setups they're all free Again, uh, I'll leave this setup, the link in the description, along with my Discord link. And, of course, all my setups are on my Discord, and they're all free. So, again, I hope you give me a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And share it as, uh, you know, YouTube doesn't really share my videos around. I'd really appreciate it. And, again, I hope you come back and visit again really soon. Y'all take care. See ya.